<clears throat> okay, class, welcome to Physics 203, class 21. This is on the Zeeman effect and intrinsic spin. Uh, the Zeeman effect is something which happens when an atoms are put in magnetic fields and it affects their uh, spectra, their emitted wavelengths, um, like we studied with the Bohr model uh, previously. And we'll find that to uh, fully understand the um, emitted wavelengths and the behavior in magnetic fields that we'll have to introduce something called intrinsic electron spin. So the Zeeman effect and the classical magnetic moment of the electron, um, <clears throat> it turns out that uh, if we look at a spectrum of an atom, without a magnetic field, a given spectral line is just a single line. It has a certain line width, as we've talked about. But if we put on a magnetic field, it's, it actually splits into several um, different lines with different wavelengths. And this is called the Zeeman splitting in the presence of a magnetic field. And this is Peter Zeeman, a Dutch physicist who discovered this first in 1896 and won a Nobel Prize for it in 1902. So to understand this, we're going to have to build up um, an understanding of how the electron in an atom interacts with a magnetic field, the applied magnetic field. So we start off with a classical picture. Um, here's an electron rotating around a proton in a hydrogen atom. And um, because it's rotating around, it has an angular momentum. Uh, the direction of the angular momentum is given by the right-hand rule. If you curl your fingers in this direction here, this counterclockwise direction, your thumb will point up in the direction of L. And this angular momentum of the electron leads to something which we call a magnetic moment, and we denote that by mu. So let's see how that works. So the magnetic moment mu is defined as the current, which is flowing, in this case, the circulating electron, times the area that the uh, inside the, uh, the flowing current, okay? So the current times the area, that's the definition of the magnetic moment. So here, the current would just be the charge over the period, the charge uh, the electron charge over the time it takes for the uh, classically for the electron to go around one time times the area that is being uh, that's enclosed by the electron in its orbit. So the charge would be minus the elementary charge since it's an electron. The period would be if we call the radius here r, and this is a, a circle here. Um, the radius would, the time would be the total distance covered over the speed, uh, which would be the circumference two pi r over v. And then with radius r, the area would be pi r squared. So um, simplifying here, canceling out the pi's, canceling out one power of r, and bringing v up to the numerator, we get the magnetic moment is minus e r v over two. Now, <clears throat> we can relate this to the angular momentum by remembering that the angular momentum for circular motion is equal to mv, the momentum, times r, the linear momentum times r. So therefore, uh, uh, rv would be equal to l over, uh, sorry, rv would be equal to l over m, so we can substitute in L over M here and get minus E over two M times L. Okay, so we can see that we get a magnetic moment, which is because of the negative charge of the electron directed opposite, so this is negative sign uh, of the angular momentum. And uh, to get from the angular momentum to the magnetic moment, we have to multiply by E over two M. Okay, so you can see the magnetic moment here opposite the uh, angular momentum for the electron. And since these are vectors, uh, we can write this as the same equation as the mu vector is minus E over 2m L vectors. 
L vector. The angular momentum is a vector. Now, um, so how does the magnetic field uh, affect this uh, magnetic moment, which we've defined? Well, a classical magnetic moment turns out to experience a torque in a magnetic field, which tends to align the magnetic moment with the direction of the field. So if I put a uh, magnetic field on in this uh, diagonal direction here, there would be a torque on the magnetic moment, which would tend to rotate the plane of the orbit until the magnetic moment aligned with the magnetic field. And we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but you can see that when the uh, magnetic moment and the magnetic field are, are in the same direction, then the cross product, which is mu b sine theta, the theta equals zero, is going to be zero. So there will be zero torque. So when they're aligned, there's no more torque and no more rotation. And this is consistent with the um, potential energy of a magnetic moment in a magnetic field, which is given by V for potential energy is minus the magnetic moment dotted with the magnetic field, dot product with the magnetic field. Okay, so remember um, the dot product is mu b cosine theta. So things tend to move toward lower potential energies. And so we'd like this, uh, the system will evolve until this is the most negative possible. And that's mo it's most negative when mu is aligned with b, because then mu dot b is mu b cosine of zero degrees, or just minus mu b. Okay, that's most negative when aligned. So that's how a classical magnetic moment interacts with a magnetic field. It's rotated by a torque, rotated by a torque until it aligns with the applied magnetic field, and then the potential energy, um, which is in, given by this dot product, is most negative. All right, so <clears throat> um, however, uh, it turns out that. Um, we need to treat this magnetic moments quantum mechanically because we're dealing with atoms. And this will help us to explain the splitting of hydrogen at, of the hydrogen spectral lines in the magnetic field that Zeeman observed. So remember that for the quantum hydrogen atom, we had uh, three quantum numbers, N, L, N, L, and M sub L. And M sub L uh, influenced the uh, M sub L influence the um, Z component of the angular momentum. It was equal to ML times H bar. So with a magnetic field applied in a given direction on an, on an atom, then we'll just call that Z for the axis that the magnetic field is applied. We remember the classical result, the magnetic moment is minus E over two M times L as vectors. So therefore, carrying that over the, uh, to the quantum um, case, we have the magnetic moment in the Z along this given direction is minus E over 2M times LZ. But LZ is ML times H bar, so ML times H bar. And I've grouped the H bar here with the E over 2M uh, because uh, we call this quantity E h bar over 2m mu sub b. Um, so it's called the Bohr magneton. So E h bar over 2m is the Bohr magneton because it shows up so much in these calculations and it's considered the basic quantum unit of magnetic moment. So we have the um, mu z, the magnetic moment in the z direction would be minus the Bohr magneton times m sub l, um, where m sub l is, as you remember, an integer, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, et cetera. <clears throat> then the energy in the magnetic field applied quantum mechanically would be minus mu dot b, which here would just be minus, since this, uh, b is in the z direction, and mu is in the z direction, would be minus mu z b, but mu z 
is minus mu b ml. So that switches the sign and we have plus mu b ml b. Okay? So we see that quantum mechanically, the additional energy supplied by the interaction with the magnetic field is proportional to the magnetic field and is proportional to the uh, m sub l quantum number. Okay? And we can use this to explain the splitting of hydrogen spectral lines in a magnetic field. Um, now we can understand this Zeeman splitting. So without any magnetic field, remember we had a single line and with, uh, with a magnetic field, we had three lines. So um, if we imagine, if we look at an energy diagram in zero magnetic field, this is the ground state, um, the 1s state, n equal one, l equal zero. And this is the uh, excited state, n equal two, L equal one, and without any magnetic field, there's only one energy level here. However, there are three uh, ML states, M sub L states associated with this L equal one, one, zero, and negative one. And they're all uh, in here in what's called a, a threefold degeneracy. That, that is the three states are packed into one place. But if we put on the magnetic field, then uh, the m sub l equal one picks up and picks up plus mu b times one times b, so plus mu b the Bohr magneton times b. The m l equal zero doesn't doesn't pick up any energy, and the m l equal minus one picks up uh, minus mu b times b. So we see that we get three distinct energy states here in the magnetic field, and therefore three distinct transitions, all with different energies. The ML equal one has a slightly higher energy, and so therefore a slightly lower wavelength. So this would be the ML equal one, the ML equal zero, and the ML equal minus one. Okay, so the interaction between the, um, the, uh, Magnetic moment of the hydrogen atom of the yeah in this case the hydrogen atom with the magnetic field and the splitting uh, according to the quantum number ml explains this uh, these three spectral lines. Okay, so that seems um, takes a little getting used to, but seems straightforward enough. Then someone came along and threw a bit of a wrench into the works, and that was these guys, Otto Stern and Walter Gerlach in 1922. And to understand their experiment, we have to first understand that uh, in a magnetic field which varies in space, okay, so here, um, remember that the strength of the magnetic field is proportional to the density of field lines. So the magnetic field here is stronger by this south pole since there's more field lines here than there are here. Um, magnetic moments experience a net force which depends on their orientation. So we can see that if a magnetic moment is uh, oriented upwards, it's tending toward the strong field. It's tending toward the field to the south pole. If it's oriented downwards, it experiences a force downwards. So in what we call a, a space-varying magnetic field, or also known as an inhomogeneous magnetic field, um, the orientation of the magnetic moment uh, causes a physical force which will tend to separate those magnetic moments and the atoms which carry them. So, uh, Stern and Gerlach set up a uh, atomic beam with silver atoms passing through such a region with a varying magnetic field. And based on Zeeman's results, we would expect uh, for, an, for an L state, L equal one state, we'd expect three beams to come out. One associated with ML equal minus one, one with ML equal zero, and one with ML equal plus one all being because the orientations of the uh, ma atomic magnetic moments are different in these cases, uh, we would get deflections in different directions and get three beams. 
But what was actually seen is two beams coming out. Okay, so two beams were coming out. So we had the silver oven, a beam of silver, silver atoms, which was collimated, which came through, and actually it came out into uh, two separate uh, deflections. Okay, so this was very mysterious, and it's not really compatible with the um, odd number of ML states, which we've come to expect, right? So for if L equals zero, we have one ML state. For L equal one, we have two times one plus one or three. For L equal two, we have two times two plus one is five, and then seven and so forth. But we can't get an even number of ML states if, if L is an integer, as it has been so far. So to understand this, we need to introduce a new type of uh, property of the atom called intrinsic electron spin. And this will help us understand the stern gerlach experiment. So two American graduate students in the 1920s, uh, Gutsmit, Gutsmit and Uhlenbeck in 1925 proposed the electron rotated around its own axis producing a circulating current. Uh, and we know that circulating currents are associated with, um, with magnetic field, with magnetic moments rather. So the idea is the electron would be uh, spinning like a globe, like the earth around its own axis, okay? Now this is actually a um, sort of a, a classical picture, an intuitive guide because someone showed that the, um, to get the required magnetic moment, the surface of the electron would have to be traveling faster than the speed of light, which is not allowed. Um, but nevertheless, it's a helpful picture to think of the electron spinning around its own axis, even if it's not um, physically true. So instead of the classical, this classical picture, we introduce a new um, quantum property of an electron called the electron spin. And the intrinsic spin quantum number is S for spin equal one half, as opposed to the uh, orbital quantum number, which is uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, so integers. And then the magnetic spin quantum number is, would be minus one half and plus one half. So minus, it goes from minus S to plus S, just like the orbital goes from minus L through plus L. So um, in terms of energy, the um, interaction with the magnetic field would be as before minus the now spin magnetic moment dot B, which is uh, by the relationship we had before, mu S would be uh, minus E over M times S. So this becomes plus E over M S dot B. And then with uh, S and B aligned, so if S and B are aligned, this would just be S Z, and this would just be the magnitude of B. So we have E over M S Z B, but S Z would be M S, the magnetic spin quantum number times H bar. So we have E over M M S H bar times B, uh, or plugging in for ms, which is plus or minus a half, plus or minus e over m times ms equals one half, plus or minus a half h bar times b. And then we can recognize that this e h bar over 2m is the Bohr magneton from before, and write this as plus or minus mu b, the Bohr magneton times b. So this would be the interaction of the um, the spin, the quantum electron spin with an applied magnetic field. But now we can understand the stern gerlach experiment because uh, <clears throat> rather than have atoms in an, an L equal one state and have ML equal minus one, plus one, and zero, as we saw for the Zeeman splitting um, with the three lines, we had actually silver atoms were determined to be in an L equal zero state so that means ML equals zero, but it divides because the intrinsic spin has 
uh, two possible states, minus one half and plus one half. And um, those experience, those magnetic moments experience force in the this region, just as the uh, the ones due to the orbital angular momentum does. Okay, so we can explain that there are two states because s is equal to one half, leading to only two possible values of m sub s. So this would be m, m sub s equal minus one half and m sub s equal plus one half here. And uh, Paul Dirac actually showed, a uh, famous theoretical physicist showed that combining quantum physics with special relativity, which we'll be looking at soon, actually requires the electron to have this intrinsic spin, okay, which was um, determined experimentally. And the last thing to note is that hydrogen atom states now have four quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, which we were, we were used to before, but also each electron in a state has an m sub s, um, m sub s being minus a half or plus a half, often called um, spin up or spin down, plus one half being up, down, minus one half being down. And this actually has consequences um, actually for the helium atom um, where we have two electrons, these two, the two electrons can occupy the ground state of the helium atom, one with ms spin up and one with spin down. And that forms an especially stable, comp, um, an especially stable uh, configuration, which explains why the helium atom is so stable. Um, it's called a noble, a noble gas. So this ms quantum number is important in chemistry for the chemistry of atoms. So we've learned that uh, there's the splitting of um, spectral lines due to a magnetic field called the Zeeman effect. We've learned that this is due to the uh, um, different values of the uh, magnetic moment um, coupling to the magnetic field and different uh, by different strengths, causing a splitting of energy levels and a splitting of spectral lines. We've seen the stern gerlach experiment, which presented a mystery because it had an even number, that is two possible values, possible deflections. And that was resolved by in, uh, introducing this intrinsic spin um, of the qu or quantum electron spin of the uh, electron. All right, thanks for your attention and I will, uh, See you soon.